Story 4. Turn your mess into a message. The Baganda say, Ekubo munaku techa, loosely translated to mean that when it rains on a poor man, it does not stop. I was thoroughly frustrated, humiliated. My premises had been locked up by the landlord for failure to pay rent and none of my friends was willing to bail me out. My business was in a total mess and if I was to keep afloat, I had to figure a way out to turn this mess around. Eventually, I borrowed money and paid the landlord. The premises were reopened and the business was up and running again. I thanked God, but I had three things to deal with. First of all, the embarrassment of having had my premises locked for more than two days. Secondly, the battle to win my customers back. And lastly, the task of making sure the landlord was always paid in time to prevent similar incidents in future. Determined not to give up on my business, I embarked on what I called Operation Redeem Me with the following strategies. Strategy 1. Overcoming the embarrassment of locked up premises. I did not want to be branded a failure, so I decided to twist and turn the mess of having had my premises locked up into a message. As soon as the premises were handed back to me, I did some renovations. I bought paint and put some coatings on my wall. At the end of it all, the message in people's minds was not Dixon's premises were closed for several days and we couldn't get service from him. Instead, what they perceived was, in order to serve us better and to make renovations, Dixon's premises were closed for a few days. In the end, what this said to my clients was that I was carefully thinking about them and in turn, the image of my business was elevated. I learned that it is our responsibility to manage the image people have of our businesses and indeed we have the ability to turn circumstances in our favor. Even when we are caught up in embarrassing setbacks, we should utilize them to make a major comeback. Strategy 2. Wooing back customers. The second hurdle was winning back my customers. It required a lot of confidence on my part. No matter how much time or money you invest in advertising, if you do not speak, walk, sleep, sneeze and breathe confidence, your efforts will yield minimal results. I already knew that painting and renovation of the premises had demonstrated to our clients that we were coming back in a big and better way. In other words, they knew that a broke company could not enjoy the luxury of painting a building that it did not own. But I added other elements to my strategy. I brought in one new movie to put the message across that we were back with the latest stock. This reassured our customers that we were ahead of the game and we won back their confidence. I then personally loaded airtime on my phone and called all my regular clients to reassure them that we had grown and that they could come in for the latest movie on the market. On that note, I must emphasize the importance of keeping a customer database or a contact list. It becomes handy when you want to give your customers any feedback that is vital for their satisfaction and your own survival. Strategy 3. Keeping on track with the rent. My third concern was to have a strategy that would guarantee that rent was always paid to the landlord on time. The experience of being locked down taught me to become more creative and find a solution or watch the business perish. As I emerged from that shame, I resolved never again to put all my eggs in one basket, as the English say. These days I have plan B, C, D and F for everything I set myself to do. My wife sometimes complains that I am too careful, but I learned my lesson well. I refuse to be beaten twice. I always recall the rule of what if. Now that plan A had not worked and my business had been closed by the landlord, I came up with plan B, which was to become a mini landlord, subletting some of the space at the premises. Maximization of space and other available resources and business is something that every smart entrepreneur must have on their fingertips. So I just reorganized the library to make use of the previously wasted space, which I then rented out to three more people. My first tenant was selling secondhand phones. He occupied the outside display and paid me 150,000 shillings per month. The second one had a computer for Bunny Music CDs and paid 50,000 Uganda shillings. The last one had a payphone and also sold airtime. He paid me 35,000 Uganda shillings. Guess what? My rent was 200,000 Uganda shillings per month. 
If you are good at mathematics, you can see that just from being a mini landlord, I was making profit of 35,000 Uganda shillings before the month started, while all the sales from the video library became profit. This is what it means to turn challenges into opportunities.